from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. Hi, this is Micah Halpern, sitting in for Tisha Bader, and here is the JBS News Update for Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Israel is in the midst of a month-long set of drills called Chariots of Fire. The country is preparing for any and all attacks they might have to face one day. This is the largest, most comprehensive drill in Israeli history. A recent Chariots of Fire drill was an enactment of an attack on Tel Aviv. During the drill, it was as if missiles shot from Hezbollah hit the center of downtown Tel Aviv and destroyed the building. Israel actually destroyed a real building in order to truly train the participants in the drill. A senior officer who could not be named, who was high-ranking member of the Home Front Command, explained that the goal was to practice complex scenarios which could occur in the future. In the next military conflict, we could experience more frequent and more intense rocket fire, especially from Hezbollah, and the potential of more racially motivated riots across the entire country after the May riots last year. The IDF trained in 42 cities and towns. They trained in industrial areas across the country, activating sirens in as many as 61 communities, all as a part of the drill, all to be prepared for the inevitable. One of their biggest fears for Israeli forces is that the roads would be blocked by rioters and that they will prevent rescue equipment from getting to the sites and will block medical teams from evacuating the wounded. As part of the drill, the IDF was trained on how to remove rioters and free up the roads. The IDF will also use a completely different internet and communication system so that it will be 100% reliable during any crisis that might arise. Who knew garbage would be so informative? The Nabataean Roman ancient trading route connected the Mediterranean world with eastern and southern sources of incense, spices, and other luxury goods, stretching from the Levant and Egypt through northeastern Africa and Arabia to India and beyond. The route was in use for 600 years, from 300 BCE to 300 CE. Professor of archaeology at the University of Haifa, Guy Bar-Oz, heads the study that excavated ancient rubbish, which had accumulated at rest stations along the route. And he says that the research of his group conducted helps unveil new information about the trade route. Professor bar Oz explained that, quote, when examining the trade composition, three main trends are recognized. International trade with a central route to Southeast Asia. International trade that connected between sea sources, especially between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. And local trade that acted as an economic belt of the route and provided raw material and food for the merchants along the route. The University of Haifa researchers pursued a strategy involving targeted small-scale excavations at ancient middens or garbage dumps at Karavansai along the Petra Gaza section of the route. Rubbish deposits rich in ash and organic remains located on the outskirts of the archaeological sites enabled the researchers to illuminate aspects of the organization of desert trade with wide implications for other ancient trade routes. What great finds they uncovered, all in rubbish. Yesterday, New York City's Fifth Avenue was transformed into a celebration of love for Israel. The 57th annual Salute to Israel Parade had tens of thousands of spectators and tens of thousands of marchers from schools, synagogues, youth groups, Jewish organizations, police, fire, ambulance, heroes, all told over 40,000 proudly strode down the avenue accompanied by marching bands and clowns on stilts, and of course, politicians. After a three-year hiatus necessitated by COVID, the theme that was chosen for this year's parade was in English, Together Again. In Hebrew, it was Kulanu Biyachad, We Are Together. The joy and love for Israel was palpable, an unabashed sense of pride for lovers of Israel. I was reviewing in the stands, cheering the marchers as they went by. I spoke to many JBS viewers who told me both how excited they were to attend the parade and how essential a part of their lives JBS is. An electric celebration of 74 years of Israeli statehood and independence, marchers made their way from 57th Street all the way to 74th Street. How appropriate. 57th 
salute to Israel parade began on 57th Street and ended on 74th, Israel's 74th anniversary celebration. When the parade first originated, nearly six decades ago, marchers marched along Manhattan's Riverside Drive. Yesterday's parade was all about Jewish pride. And now a look at this evening's programming on JBS. At 7, Israeli-American star of stage, screen, and television, Mike Burstein, discusses his film, Azimuth. At 7.30, it's a look at the documentary, Fiddler, Miracle of Miracles. At 8, Ron Wasserman and Justin Ellis join Shahar Azani to discuss Fuel for Truth, the organization whose mission is to empower young American Jews to stand by Israel and equip them with the tools to combat misinformation surrounding the Jewish state. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Israeli singer Ron Eliran on L'Chaim. At 10, painter Ron Agam speaks at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up next, Shahar Azani speaks with Zionist Rabbinic Coalition founder Rabbi Stuart Weinblatt on his organization's goal to foster support for Zionism and Israel and his vision for the future. This is Micah Halpern and the JBS News Update. I want to wish everyone a good evening.